obviously uh, lost some guys in the offseason. Uh, we did, yeah. We lost some good football players, you know. So that's what's uh, always exciting about a new season. we got to find some new guys, you know. And so we've got uh, suspects and uh, prospects. And, uh, you know, it's early, so we'll see what happens when the games start. That's why we have these uh, preseason games to find out what guys do when the lights come on, you know, because sometimes they change. What can you tell them during the during the practices as opposed to the games? Because games is really when you find out. Oh, I think you can find out a lot in practice. Number one, you find out about people's work ethic, how hard they work, you know, uh, what kind of passion they have for football, because this is hard. This is hard work, and sometimes it's not fun. So we got to show that, uh, you know, they enjoy the grind. So that's number one, and then I think you can always find out about guys' athletic ability. You know, because we go out there and we try to compete against each other every day, so we try to make comparisons on uh, which guys uh, move better in space, and that's what special teams are. What value has Johnny provided on special teams? Johnny Holden? Yes, sir. Uh, well, number one, he's fast. He's got one thing that nobody can coach, nobody can teach. He can run fast. And I think uh, the best thing about rookies is they become second-year players. So he's learning a lot of stuff about football. Uh, I think he's learned a lot of stuff about life uh, in pro football. So I think, uh, uh, obviously, we're expecting him to be much better this season. Would you say that last season he was, he was raw and he's, he's advanced? I think raw is a kind word, okay? I think he was very raw. Uh, he just, uh, you know, it's, it's totally different than college football. It's a different game than college football. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, a lot of the rules are similar, but, you know, you're playing against men. And uh, the men in this league, you got to be a man. So I think there's a lot of growing up for guys to do when they come out of college. What's it been like having Cordero in the next step? It's been great. You know, there's a guy that uh, has a ton of talent. Uh, and like we were just talking about, his work ethic is outstanding. He works hard. He wants to be really good. And uh, those guys are fun to coach, fun guys to coach, because uh, you can see him uh, come out here and try to do what we asked him to do, and he's really good at it. It seems like several of your leaders from last year, whether it was Bates or Traubeck or Holmes or Jones, aren't, aren't a part of this group. Who do you look to for special teams leadership? Well, you know, I think you got to go to the other guys that have been here, you know, like uh, Jamez Alawali. Uh, you know, there's a really solid person. Uh, Keith McGill, another guy that's a real solid person. you got to look at our specialists, uh, the kicker and the punter and the snapper. Those guys have been around a long time. So we ask those guys to be leaders. And I think we'll find out more. That's to me, is one of the things we'll find out in these games, which guys will step up when, you know, there's some adversity, when something bad happens or something good happens, and uh, how do they react to those things. Patterson said he's not really like one like a leader, rah-rah type of guy, but as far as, like, what type of vocal presence is he? Talking about CP? Uh, you know, I think he's a guy that, uh, he leads by example, because he's a good worker, you know, and he doesn't have to be a rah-rah guy, and I think uh, he'll, he'll speak up when uh, there's a time to speak up, and I, I, I think we haven't had any of those times yet, and so I'm excited about having him on our team, because I just think he's a pro. Terrell, Terrell Davis is inducted in the Hall of Fame today, and there's a, a story about him where he's a seventh-round draft pick, and basically in Tokyo, he went down on a kickoff return and just lit somebody up, and that's how he caught the eye of the team. Is that a well-known story that is told among special teams coaches? And can you think of any other instances where you've seen guys do something like that and jump-started careers? You know, it's interesting you say that because we were playing Denver that year in the preseason. I can't tell you where I was at. But it was, uh, we were watching the preseason games. I had to look, up, look him up. Who is Terrell Davis? He made every tackle on their kickoff team. It was like, I don't know where they got this guy, but he is really a good football player. You can see it right away, you know? And so I think about that all the time when they're talking about this guy's a great runner. He's a great football player. Can you think of anybody in, in, in a lot of different teams, guys that sort of jump-started careers by kind of catching someone's eyes first on special teams? Well, I think, uh, let's go with Lorenzo Alexander. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's there's a guy that, shoot, he's in the top, you know, five sack players this past season, you know, and he made his, all his bones on special teams. And he started out as a defensive lineman. Uh, this guy's just changed his body to be a football player in this league, you know. And now he's a very good linebacker and a really good special teams player. And uh, there was a guy that, you know, he made it because of his effort and his abilities in the kicking team.
Well, I, you know, again, that uh, games will show that, but in practice, he's done a really nice job. We're trying him as a cover player, you know, and always he's going to be, uh, uh, you know, a little bit lacking in the size area. So you always worry about that aspect. But again, like I've told Jadon, there's nothing he can do about that. That was uh, that was God's decision. So all he can do is work with what he has, and he's done a great job of working with what he has. And he's really done a nice job in the return game. Uh, and I think we have good returners, but uh, he's also a guy that uh, has showed up in practice. I think of an effective, gentle way of asking this question, but you're six years old. Your kicker and your holder, or all probably long snapper, are in their mid to late 30s. You get the conversation in your room maybe a little different than what happens in other rooms where there's younger specialists and younger coaches? I think that's a really gentle way of putting it, that we are all old, okay? <laughs> and uh, we like to look at it as we're all experienced. And so you're right, we have a whole different set of uh, things happen to us in our career that uh, changes our perspective from maybe some of those young guys. So yeah, the, the uh, conversation is, can be very different. And uh, it's, uh, it's a fun conversation, because it's fun having these guys that and they've seen just about everything you can see. And so, uh, and it's amazing is every year in football, we see something that we haven't seen. And it's fun talking to those guys like, I have never seen that before. And so, uh, we always get a good one. What's your thoughts on Pastor? His chances to really make it? You know, uh, I coached against Steve. Uh, he was one of those guys that was fantastic football player. You know, and again, uh, people say, you know, the kicking game is a third of the game. Well, then that should be part of the Hall of Fame, you know, because this guy in Buffalo, now he, he created a lot of advantages for the Bills. I mean, just by field position, by what he did. And so there's a guy to me that is extremely worthy of consideration to go to the Hall of Fame because he was a difference maker in that area. And that's what the Hall of Fame is supposed to be about. Seabass has been doing this a long time. Does he have to do anything different to maintain his level of performance? And you know, I think I think as a guy gets older, I think it's like everybody in life. You know, you got to keep yourself uh, stretching. You got to get because uh, you get stiffer as you get older, as I well know. Uh, so you got to stretch more. I think he's done a nice job of uh, uh, maintaining his weight. Uh, he's a heavy lifter, uh, so he's always keeping himself strong. I think, uh, and every year, I think he realizes more and more how important those assets, a aspects of his game are. And so he has really worked hard at the physical part, I think, maybe much more so than he did when he was young. I, I think, if I recall right, it was back in June, he credits you for getting more into film work. For actually, did you have to talk him into No, no, I didn't. You know, it's just kind of what we have always done wherever I've been. You know, we watch film with the kickers and the punters and go over their technique and, you know, ways that maybe we can help them a little bit. And, uh, really just try to be another set of eyes for them because they know what they're looking for but sometimes they don't always see it so uh, I think watching film with them is a good way to uh, just give them another perspective from just their own. Anything strike you yesterday about, about that 56 yarder? Uh, that it went through that was the best thing that's when out there all we care about is let's make it you know it doesn't matter how it looks it's just uh, let's make sure they're good. All right guys thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks coach. Thank you guys. You bet.